What's happening, fandoms? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we react to music videos and shows. Today, we're going back to The Expanse. We're in Season 2, Episode 7. This one's called The Seventh Man. And uh, that's obviously a sports reference. I'm not big on sports, so I don't know which one. But uh, maybe soccer? I don't know. Uh, but uh, we'll figure out what it means eventually, I guess. Um, in our last episode, probably the biggest event um of well I, I don't know if it's the biggest event of book one um certainly it's it's the beginning of book two so by hitting the events on ganymede state uh the station the agricultural uh station on ganymede we have begun book one which means that most of the major events of book one should be done um, did I say began book one? Began book two, I think, is what I, I meant to say, whether I screwed it up or not. Um, pardon me, I'm just a, I'm recovering from a little bit of a respiratory illness, so try not to cough too much. Uh, in the episode, though, we saw the beginnings of the next little arc here, which is really amazing, and represented for the books the very first time that we ever were introduced to uh gunny draper and her crew although it was a very brief introduction to her crew um as we have seen probably or will soon learn almost all of she i think she's the only survivor of this fight on the surface of ganymede where we had a space battle a miraculously crazy space battle and uh orbiting platforms crashing down to the surface of the moon and all kinds of crazy stuff um and uh the we really didn't see much but there was a very in there a mysterious figure that isn't really accounted for in any way or explained and we're gonna learn more about this thing that we saw uh, in coming episodes and so that's very exciting man um i'm loving how things are progressing uh i have not yet dived into book four and my reread of the uh, book series um i didn't want to get too far ahead because we like i said we're just really beginning to touch book two related topics and i don't want to be i want things to be fresh in my mind as they occur um and uh also the other interesting thing that occurred in last episode was uh episode six was, was the first time that the show officially provided a name for fred johnson's second in command uh, I've been aware of that name through commenters and comments for some time now. Um, I think ever since the first time we ever saw her, but she's not credited in the, in the closed captioning or in the x-ray from Amazon or in the credits, uh, with a name until last episode. And now we know that this is Carmina Drummer. Um, and... I mentally know that Drummer is a, a character that is introduced in book five. My memory does not tell me that though. I don't have I don't have any idea who Drummer is because I don't recall what what role she played in the books. That's why I'm doing a reread as I go through these because um, I, I've read so many different series and I cannot retain things for, for a long, long term. Um, so while I consciously am aware that she's from the books and she has a role that's apparently fairly significant, I have no idea what she did in the books. So to me, she's essentially a hybridized replacement for a character from Tycho, who in the books we know is Samantha. And she, Samantha doesn't exist in the series, in the show. Um, so she only exists through her hybridization character that is Carmina Drummer. So it's kind of kind of sad. Sam was a 
was a, a very fun character in the books and I enjoyed the crew's interaction with her. All of them had interactions with her of various kinds. Um, but uh, it's okay that they've streamlined things and made these choices as authors to rewrite things in ways that make more sense for the show. And I'm totally fine with it. Um, and I am excited to relearn what role Drummer has in the, in the storyline. Especially since it's going to be slightly different than the books anyway, because she represents multiple characters. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's everything that I really wanted to cover. We're, we're definitely seeing some advancement of the plotline of uh, Christian and Aaron Wright's, you know, head-to-head -head combativeness over you know, their disparate goals, um, despite being literally one as the boss of the other, they are fighting for different sides. Um, and uh, Christian knows it and she's fighting to, uh, to stay, you know, alive basically in this role. And uh, it's fun to see her making, making moves in the shadows and trying to, uh, trying to uh, navigate this precarious spycraft situation so all right let's go ahead and uh dive in to the next episode here we go and a shout out to all my commenters on patreon likely you're the only ones that are going to see this because i usually cut out all of the intro <laughs> music stuff on the youtubes shout out Okay, we're back with Bobby. A little damage readout. She's messed up, it looks like. These snowflakes are blood from somebody else drifting through the air. Is that what that is? That's a... Oh, they All blew her suit. Fire from UNN and MCRN forces hit one of our orbital mirrors, which crashed into the station and several ag domes. We estimate over 3,000 dead and thousands more wounded. This was an escalation. We need to choose an appropriate Martian target in response. Christian. Shut up. We invite Mars to a peace summit. A peace summit? And what? Foot massages, too? Trust me, we Mars need... wants this worse than we do. And whom do I serve? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you ever run for office? I like getting shit done, and I like to keep my head attached to my neck. Your father was smart. You're smarter. Mm-hmm. Docks three and seven. Keep All on wrecking Aaron Wright's plans, Christian. Waiting to clear and despite the circumstances, it'll be good to see you against the tower. Until then. That was Anderson Dawes. Now, I thought Fred worked for the OPA as well. We got a little bit of food, a little bit of water on the menu. <laughs> of course, Alex is going to do close up magic, make a coin disappear or something. Oh, Baltalada, welcome on. Is that what he calls it? He used to call it a shakedown. You mm -hmm. think that's why Bells love him? Because he lined his own pockets for years. Doors put all of those bribes back into the neighborhood. I said one each. Back off. Leave my mother alone! You leave her alone! Mm. Ooh. That, that did something to him. Hmm. Interesting set him back all right Amos did he just walk away from where he was working interesting Draper. Gunny you're on the Sirocco I'm Commander Thorson Gunny I'm sorry to be the one to tell you but no one from your team made it mm, yep well, that's what happened I was hoping you could tell us. Six blues. 
They were coming right at us. We didn't see this though. Then we got jammed. I, gra I grabbed Travis and we made a line. He was Lieutenant on. Lieutenant Sutton was killed with eleven others on this run. Oh boy. Come on, Bobby. Poor Bobby. What a traumatic experience. <clears throat> Losing your entire team like that? Dr. Man. Cortisar, it changed your brain with that procedure. That's f forever, right? It was temporary at first. Dresden never coerced any of us. The procedure, if you're interested. I didn't say that. Hmm. Today, there was this boy that looked at me like I was a monster. I think I scared his mother. Love kept me at her bedside until she died. Nearly caused me to miss out on the greatest work humanity has ever undertaken. Man, this guy is creep. The proto-molecule... ...devours old constructs and recreates them. We are about to rewrite the entire story of humanity. Nope. And if you like, you can be a part of that too. I can help you. We are Belters. Yeah. We have okay. a historic opportunity before us. First, Eros. Now, Ganymede. Earth and Mars have pushed themselves to the brink, and they'll have to find a path to peace. Anderson Dawes should represent us. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. No disrespect. Earth and Mars at peace. Uh -oh. the belt, equal partners in that peace. Huh? But is it too much an Urta's dream? For well, that is when they will turn their sights back on all of us. Never. Never. The inners are not like us. Urtas mm. cannot look upon a thing but wonder who it belongs to, huh? To make it their possession. And those that will not share. <laughs> and if we are all well wala. Homie ain't gonna die, huh? <laughs> okay. Urtas, Martians, they see us as their possessions. <laughs> Animals, they will do it again. We must Who's protect ourselves at? against hmm. these weapons. We must find out what it was. It is my hope that someday we will know the whole truth of Eros. We don't want another Eros any more than we do. Okay, Fred, tell him. Fred Johnson says that we are safe. <laughs> but I say, once a thing is written, I was on Eros. Returning them will show that the belt is ready to lead the peace. James Holden. Huh? Baratna. Baratna. You see, one by one, the best Earth has to offer us are coming to our fight. You think this is over? She's a true belter. I hope that it is. Hmm. There's a lot of a side eyes going on this during this that meeting. Which is why you should have stayed out of it. Tank grown, but still not bad. She looks you beat been to, to hell. Soon enough, sir. My mother was foreign secretary. Took me there on a dip tour when I was 15. Oh, he's using the truth drug on her. Or the perception enhancer. Ooh. You radioed sudden and said your team was under attack. You reported shots fired from the UN line, then. Fucking Earth has attacked us. Mm -hmm. They want a war? We'll give them a goddamn war. It's not quite what happened, I think. And I think she's just having a, a memory issue. But 
truth is, it's never what you expect it to be, eh? You mean like all Earthers aren't scumbags? Mm. Some Belters are just full of shit? I didn't say it was the whole story. And bad men do things believing it's full of God of all mankind. Yeah, that's, that's true. how I know this isn't over, Satara. He wouldn't offer me up to the inner planets as his errand boy or be willing to return Earth's missiles so readily unless he had another card to play. Mm. None that we know of. Now get off my ship. We are in this together. Otherwise, we're all lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's James Holden's idealism talking. He is an idealist. That is true. This looks like a, an assault. This looks like the... Uh, this is the Shiraka where she lost her commander. Don't worry, I'm not here to proselytize. You went through mm. something pretty horrible down there. Whatever you're feeling is okay. I'm a Marine, I'll be fine. You know, I served with your father. He would have been very proud of you. I can't remember. What about, what about her suit? Help you with that. Doesn't her suit have the, the feeds, the cameras? We've come a long way since the loading docks on cities. Hey, Molly. You don't get to call me that anymore, Pampa. Pampa. From what people tell me, you're the one really running things around here. If we're going to reminisce, let's at least get a drink, huh? We will toast to Fred Johnson's secret weapon. That sounded a little bit like French accent. <laughs> secret weapon. Oh, he's giving her the perception stuff. Hmm, interesting. Wow. That was very emotional. He's getting new data. He says it's talking to him. If the belt has the proto molecule, no one will ever use it against us again. Mm -mm. I don't like the way that sounds. And before, on that Earth station? Yeah, yeah. With Miller, too. I better keep my eye on you. Soon your legend will be better than mine. Hmm. Yeah, Diogo was Must there. Must have been a great raid. Important station like that. Sasaki. You ran with the Five Points crew. I grew up in the Rose Bert too. He's pumping him for information. Do you know how old you are? 19, I think. That we can make a difference. What does a day really mean when you're in space? A day isn't a thing. In recognition of your extraordinary service to Mars, MCRN Command has awarded you the Purple Heart. Nice. The Purple Heart. Just like that, huh? Thank you, sir. After the shit show on Ganymede, Earth and Mars are meeting for an emergency summit. I know I'm not wrong about that. Well, truth is a tricky thing, especially when... They stormed our line. That thing was driving them I forward. I don't want to hear any more talk about a thing, Gunny. Are mm. we clear? Oh, okay. The official story is there's no thing. You know what I remember most about Earth, Gunny? I not see you going to tell me a fucking story now to sell me on this bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. Sergeant, you're uh -huh. going to Earth. Yep. You're going to Earth. 
Yeah, I expected that. Man, she go she goes on an interesting arc from here. Where are you going, Jim? Where are you sneaking off to in the middle of the night? With a gun. Is he on his own ship now, or did... Hmm. What is going on here? Oh, Dyson. Or Dawes, not Dyson. Dawes stole the scientist with Diogo. Docking club release, buff 38C. Override it. Can't do. Systems locked out. Hmm. How did he arrange to have all this happen? Go! Hmm. So he's sending him on a tracking mission. <laughs> Psycho TC, this is Rasanante requesting emergency release. A little infighting in the OPA. Oh, love it. We get a chase scene. They cut their drive. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, damn. Love these the visuals. Disease. We cannot shoot them down. Not down. Out. Gonna disable them. Okay. Precision point cannon shooting. Take out their drive or something. Steady. Steady. Okay. Really? Three, this is interesting. Two, one. Diogo. You got me. Just me. Turn around, you little shit. Quasar. How did we they lose him? What happened? They have a ship they took off on? Oh. All right. That's very cool. We're getting basically entirely new storylines within within the main storyline I, I like it this is a uh, this this scientist Cortazar my understanding is that he has a a major role later in the series um, and perhaps that he he has some that maybe there's some side material that they wrote some novelettes and short stories and so on looks like we're getting some of that stuff perhaps incorporated into the main storyline because this particular little side quest that we're on right here i don't recall this happening at all i don't i don't remember anderson um and uh fred having any kind of a head-to-head -head like this at least not through book three and uh the this particular scientist doesn't play a major role in the first three books at all so we're either advancing a storyline for much, much later in the main books that I'm not currently remembering, um, or this is basically brand new material. Now, it is very interesting um, that uh, Anderson has put all these pieces together with the help of Diogo. Um, I think primarily his his blabble blabbermouthness is what led to him discovering Cortazar. And then he thinks that this is the secret, that Cortazar knows how to make the weapon, the protomolecule. And there might be something to that. He certainly knows a lot about it. Um, and that's, and that's interesting. Uh, I don't understand how they got away because there was only a very short gap when they didn't know where this ship was. Um, Maybe there was a shuttle that they launched that took off. I don't know. Um, perhaps they'll tell us how Anderson got away. Um, but Diogo was the only one left on this ship that took off. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, we'll figure out how they explain all this later, I guess. Um, uh, perhaps 
Diogo is the only one that ever left Tycho, and Anderson is still back there hiding some way and will leave on a different ship or something. I don't know. We'll figure all that, all those details out later. N not a big deal. Now, um, the storyline of, uh, of Mars and the peace talks and sending Gunny, this is definitely what I was expecting. Um, we're gonna get um, Draper sent to Earth to be an official part of the, of the peace talks. And uh, that will be fun because th this is the beginning of a long arc for long, long arc for Draper. Um, and I intend to enjoy all of it because it's just delicious, especially the way we've built up her character being so ultra nationalistic, patriotic, wanting that war, wanting the conflict, wanting to attack Earth like it is very, very much a piece of her personality that they've portrayed. It's deep rooted, it's fierce, and she has feelings and um, and is willing to lash out at her authority figures and really make her make her stance known. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how how this character growth occurs. Um, Thought it was fun that we got the concentration drug back, but they used it both to interrogate her and for her to use to relive this horrific, painful memory of losing her entire squad in this battle. Although I, I think she lost uh, some of her crew just a stray impact of you know solar mirrors and whatever else it was that fell from the, from the sky onto the surface of that moon. Um, and uh, it was very painful to, to see her relive that. Very well acted. I, I appreciate her work even more now than I've previously stated. She, that, was, that was an emotion-filled sequence and uh, very well done. I, I liked it a lot. Um, and uh, this, this episode was um, largely focused away from the crew of the Rosinante and uh, helped drive some of the geopolitical uh, conflicts out in the, out in the world. And uh, we saw yet again, back on Earth, speaking of those geopolitical, we saw Aaron Wright fighting for war in his own way. And yet Christian managing with her level head and her, um, her skills, managing to convince her bosses around Aaron Wright to uh, kind of go her way. And uh, it's, it's definitely, um, definitely true to the way that character read. And it felt like she was able to um, manipulate the situation to, to sort of get her way, despite her boss being the one that wants, Aaron Wright being her direct boss, he's the one that wants to go to war, and yet she's able to, to, uh, to work the situation to get what she wants. And uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful to see it in play. That actress is just stunning. I still don't know how to properly say her name, but man, I really appreciate her work and her voice is so magnificent and it really contributes to her overall just power and impact. I'm really appreciating her um, in this and in other things that I, I know she's in now. Um, yeah, so uh, i trying to think if there's any other major plot points to hit. A Amos. We got a little glimpse into the, um, the the mind a little bit, the mindset of Amos and his protectiveness of the children and his like a visceral reaction to that whole like mother-child situation that was going on there. And uh, 
I, I do remember that in the books, Amos's backstory was a long, slow reveal. It was a slow, slow, slow burn through many, many books of the, of the series. But it has some real tragic pieces. Um, and uh, I, I enjoy the fact that they are allowing it to unfold organically long long con like they did in the books not not really con just a long burn on uh, on how they're how they're letting that stuff come to the surface cuz Amos is he's both very very simple cuz he's direct he says exactly what he means and does exactly what he means to do without any pretense or Stalling, he's just an immediate. His thoughts come out as his words, and his action, and his actions reflect his thoughts, and it is immediate and and clear. But at the same time, he has these deep motivations that come from his full character development, which we don't really learn until sort of much later. So. That I'm, I'm glad that they're maintaining that and um, Amos is a he is a simple character in the fact that he wears everything right on the outside and there's no subterfuge but he also has a bit of a dark past that we need to, f to learn about and uh, yeah um, that's all I'll say about that I'm, and I'm excited to see how they're doing it and it's fun yeah, um, love the, of course, that we got a chase scene, uh, a space chase, so to speak, um, and that they, you know, shot their drive out, but I don't understand how Dawes got away. Um, we'll have to have them tell us that later. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Thank you guys so much for all the comments and the views and the likes and everything that you do. Uh, we do have a, a fairly vibrant scene on our Patreon where people are commenting and talking about the episodes there. You can find them there in a full watch along format in episode one of every season. So that's season one and two. Those are available for anyone to view without, without joining. Um, so if you want to check out how that format works, you can do it that way. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you so much. We appreciate you and we'll see you in the next video.